is the architecture itself is kind of new and therefore the methods that we use to test will, uh, some of it will be new as well, some of it, most of it is old. But uh, we need to think about it, especially when it comes to testing, uh, unit testing, component testing, integration testing, that sort of thing. Now, microservices, because of the nature of how easy and simple it is to work with, it means that there's a quick turnaround time in terms of uh, uh, new development, in terms of changes to the code, in terms of uh, adding new features. This quick turnaround time has to be supported by the testing that we do in this sort of environment. We also need to work with several different uh, devices, uh, things like mobile devices, regular computers. So our testing, again, has to support all of this. Now, microservices are mainly web-based, and for good reason, in that it's uh, the architecture itself handles requests from over the web in a much more efficient way than, let's say, a monolithic application. Now, microservices are considered single responsibility. That means that each service is its own stack. And it means then that our testing has to be able to deal with these single response, these single stacks, and also the way these single stacks communicate with each other. And also we need to think about uh, going along with the single responsibility idea. It means that some microservices come together, come bundled with a, with a database. It, it's not a very large database, but there might be a database involved. Therefore, our testing has to be able to deal with data coming from a database as well. Now, taking that uh, unit uh, or the uh, single responsibility idea a little bit further, we can think of uh, microservices as being made up of components, as being made up of layers, as being made up of several different functions or functionalities within a solution. Therefore, if our tests were to pass on these various layers, then we know that the application as a whole would be functioning perfectly. Now, as with traditional systems, we do have unit tests in microservices. And these unit tests tend to focus on the smallest component. Now, that component could be a single application, or it could be a combination of applications, as in the case of an inventory service that has uh, maybe a service that uh, goes out and checks the stock level. There may be another service that checks if there's a recall on that, uh, that item, and so on. So it's a combination of these different services that form the smallest component. So this is something that needs to be decided upon beforehand, so developers can know what is their definition of a smallest component. Now, within these services, within a component, there's communication happening, and our testing has to be able to deal with the communication inside of the component. So, for example, the inventory service, if someone were to ask for a particular product, then that service should be able to check to see if there's a recall on that product, etc., before the product is given as a, as a saleable item. Now, at this point, of course, we should avoid any external services. We need to test the component or how the layers inside of that component talk to each other and transfer data between each service. So there's no need to involve some kind of an external uh, hit to the application as a whole. Now, from the unit testing, we move on to something called integration testing. And this is very similar to testing communication inside the component. The idea here is that once the component works, once the, all of the tests have passed, as we check each component, then we can check the other level where the components now talk to other components. And again, we're going to test the communication between components. And again, we're going to ex uh, avoid external services because at this point, at this time in our development process, we're not worried about uh, external requests to our solution as a whole. We're just concerned with the internal workings of each component, each layer, each service. At some point in time, we're going to get to what's called contract testing. In contract testing, we ignore the body of the component. In other words, that has already been done. We are sure that the component is working according to specs. So at this point in time, this is where we will involve the, what would happen at the user end. So we're going to test the endpoints of the solution as a whole. And as a matter of fact, we may involve uh, third-party tools so, for example, JVM-based services may use something called inProctor or inProct tester. And for .NET services, we could use something called Plasma. The aim of the test at this level is to simulate actual API calls to the uh, solution and make sure that the response from each component as expected. 
At some point in time, we're going to get to functional testing, and this is where we test the solution as a whole. So we're going to look for things like network falls, network bottlenecks. This kind of testing will run for a very long time because we're testing the entire solution. We may need to replace user requests with service calls. So in other words, what we're going to do is we're going to probably involve some third-party solutions here to send requests or send API requests to the service and watch how the system responds to those services. We would need to define the environments where possible. And what that means is that uh, if, if this is really for very large systems where we have several functions happening, so we may need to define exactly what function a particular part of the microservices environment should be tested. Of course, at this point, we can use the software, uh, third-party software, and software like Ansible, Chef, and Puppet may come in handy here. Now, these are not testing software in their own right, but they are actually administrative services that we can apply at the macro level to be able to to help us with the functional testing.